Hi, this is Gary from Ether Security Lab, and in this video, we are going to look into T Shark and how to use it for network forensics. If you don't know T Shark, it's basically the little brother of Wireshark. You have probably heard of Wireshark, it's the most famous network analysis tool, and T Shark is its terminal version. You can do pretty much the same things in T Shark than in Wireshark uh, in terms of filtering, and since it runs in a terminal, it's pretty good for scripting as well. T Shark comes with Wireshark, so if you have Wireshark installed, then you already have T Shark as well. The main difference is that you probably are not going to use T Shark for manual analysis because it doesn't have a graphical user interface. For that, you can keep using Wireshark. But T Shark is really good to extract data from the pickup files or from the network traffic. Then you can use this data in whatever other tools you want to use them. We are going to see a couple of examples for that. I will use a pickup file downloaded from the internet and I wanted to show you where it comes from because it's a pretty good collection of pickup files. So this website, I never know how to pronounce these companies. Um, I think netrosec.com has a very good list of various projects that created pickup files and share it on the internet. It includes various security exercises, uh, malware, ICS traffic and capture the flag traffic, for instance, DEF CON, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It is a really good resource if you need a pickup file uh, for any kind of research. I will use a pickup, which is malware traffic recorded after the infection. Let's first open it in Wireshark. You can see it shows 23,100 packets, which is pretty decent, but not too huge. So we're going to work with this one. But enough of Wireshark for now. Uh, our goal is to get to know T-Shark. First off, you can also use T-Shark to capture network traffic. To do that, you can say T Shark minus I for interface. And my interface is called EN33. And then minus W to write the captured traffic into a file. And I will use the file at uh, slash TMP slash test.pcap. And I'm just going to open another terminal and say wget example.com to download example.com. All right, let's go back to T-Shark. 29 packets were captured. I can close it and read back the same file. For that, I will use T-Shark minus R for read slash TMP slash test.pcap. It shows the simplest display of the traffic. As you can see, this was probably before I launched wget. Then here is the DNS resolution for example.com. And after that, we can see the HTTP traffic to example.com. Now, obviously what you see here is not the contents of the pickup file. This is just a summary that is shown by default. Of course, everything is there in the pickup file that went through the network. All right, let's try some more useful scenarios. We're gonna work with the capture.pcap. First, with this command, we list the body of all HTTP POST requests in the capture file. Minus R defines the file to read. Minus capital Y defines the display filter. The display filter is the same as what you would write in the Wireshark filter field on its main page. We filter for all HTTP requests that are using the POST method. Minus capital T defines the output format. There are a couple of formats like JSON, for instance, but I will use the fields format where you can define which fields you want to see with the minus E parameter. We choose the text field, which is the body of the request. First, it looks pretty weird, but when we, for instance, go back to Wireshark and use the same filter and we open it down here, this is the information you can see at T Shark as well. For instance, you can see the form items here. This could be useful if the data was exfiltrated through post requests. For instance, malware could send the collected data to the command and control server this way. If you want to collect all the data that was exfiltrated for later analysis, then this way you can do it. You can extract the data, uh, save it somewhere, and at that point you can still format the data with Linux commands to whatever format you like it. All right, the next example is something I just used in the flare on reverse engineering challenges. I needed to create host file entries from a pickup file because I wanted to emulate the DNS resolution for a binary I was testing. 
I didn't want to set up a whole DNS server, so I just copied everything into the etc hosts file directly. You can do this with the minus z host command. And as you can see, it basically takes the DNS queries from the capture file. And from that, it generates a host file format for those DNS queries. These are all the domain names that were resolved in this network capture. And uh, these are all the IP addresses that they were resolved to. If you take this output and copy it directly into your slash etc slash host file, after that, you're not going to need DNS. Uh, to resolve these entries because the IP addresses are already here. This could be useful if you're testing a malware and it wants to connect to some specific domain name and you don't want to set up a fake DNS to, uh, to resolve that. You can just do this and uh, create these host entries. And with that, the domain name will be resolved for your malware. In this other example, we check which subdomains were loaded under a specific domain. In this case, from facebook.com. This could be interesting, for instance, if you are pen testing and you are interested in other domains under a target company's domain. With this display filter, we are searching in the DNS responses. As you can see, we discovered a couple of new host names. So, in the pen test scenario, our attack surface basically just got bigger. Next, let's move to HTTP traffic. If you want to analyze HTTP traffic more closely, then, of course, you can do it with t -shark. So, we'll see a couple of examples around that. In the first one, we use the HTTP host field to be shown. This is not the domain name, but the host header in the HTTP request. For instance, we have a couple of post requests, and if we come here to the hypertext transfer protocol, and um, this is the host header. It might not be the same as the domain name that is loaded because a server with one IP address can have multiple domain names and uh, can host multiple websites. So because of that, it could be interesting to dump host names. And what we are doing here is basically querying the HTTP host headers and we are sorting it, then merging redundant lines and sorting it again. And finally, we are just printing the top 10 of the list. So these are the top 10 host headers from the HTTP requests. In the next scenario, we are using a display filter for the user agent. We filter the HTTP packets that contain the user agent header, and we print the http.useragent field. We are going to sort them, group them, and sort them again to see a little statistics to it as well. When you do this, you can see that, for instance, this user agent was used 104 times, this was used 28 times, etc. This could be interesting, for instance, if your malware is using a specific user agent, or maybe the malware would exfiltrate data through the user agents, and this way you can basically dump all the user agents that pass through your network. Obviously, you could use a different filter that would focus on that specific user agent, and you could check where it's coming from. So, for instance, if you have a malware in your network um, that is using that specific user agent, then you can identify which machines are compromised in your network. In the next scenario, we are making a display filter for HTTP request method like uh, GET. We are collecting packets that have the GET request in them, and from those packets, we are printing out the host header and the requested URL. So basically, what we are trying to figure out is which URLs were loaded through HTTP GET. And as you can see, from the cdn.bubbledog.com, we were loading all these URLs. Again, this could be an interesting scenario if you know where your malware is uh, connecting back. Often malware would exfiltrate data through the URL, and with this filter, you could collect all the exfilt URLs and you can do uh, further analysis on them. We have seen already that you can use T-Shark to generate simple statistics from the pickup files. Another example for that is this filter for HTTP request. We are taking all HTTP requests and from those we extract the request method and the host that was loaded and the requested URL. And then we can use sort and unique to create the statistics. You can see for instance that, that seven post requests were sent to this URL, two posts to that URL, etc. Lastly, 
in this next example, I create display filter. I'm not interested in HTTP traffic now. So I'm removing the TCP port 80 and TCP port 443. And I'm going to see the traffic that is coming from a specific IP. And I want to list all the destination ports. So in this case, I want to find out whether this IP connects to which IP address is over another protocol than HTTP. For instance, such a solution could be useful when you know that one of your machines is infected and uh, you want to find out which port the malware uses to propagate in the network. If there is a specific port, then you can use that in a similar filter. So basically, with another filter, you can figure out to which IP addresses the infected computer connects to on that specific port that is used by the malware. This could give you a good indication on which other machines could be infected in your network. All right, that's all for today. I hope this gave you a little idea of how you could use uh, T-Shark. If you have specific scenarios, how you already used T-Shark in the past, then let us know in the comment. And of course, if you like this video, you can subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, thanks for watching and happy hacking.